Welcome back, YouTube travelers. More of Motorsport Manager coming your way. This is Ernie's Paradise, of course. I'm Thetimix, and it's time to get on with the second half of the season, starting in Guildford. Now, we did just finish, I do believe, our final engine. So we're definitely going to want to give that one over to Surikov. Interestingly enough, he moves from delighted down to happy after getting a better engine. Oh, you're a whiner. You are a whiner. Okay, so now we have to decide what we're going to design next. We'll take a look at the mail in a moment. So we've done the engine, we've done the rear wing. What's going to be best for the rest of the year? And you've got to assume at least the next couple races, we're not going to get the new part in. I think we're looking for one more part, and that's about it. So starting around Milan or Munich, if we go to the end, let's see. Gearbox, brakes, front wing. Gearbox, front wing. Last four races, front wing is crucial in all of them. Last five races. I mean, that seems to be a pretty compelling thing. And also there. Now let's, although we're not going to get it in time for that, let's see where our part is at that. See, we're, we're doing pretty good on that. It's actually our second best part. Suspension or brakes would actually probably help us more overall. But given how many front wing tracks there are, I'm really inclined to go that direction. So if we take that option, we just want to get started here and we should be able to get going on this pretty quickly. I'm going to take one more look at the calendar. What about the, uh, the brakes or the suspension? Wasn't it suspension? Yeah, can I talk myself into doing brakes or spe look at our look at our uh, <laughs> look at our speed, our our uh, engine e gads. Okay, leave that leave that aside. So we do have like brakes there, suspension there, gearbox. We're pretty good on the gearbox. There's a suspension. There's a brakes. But yeah, it's it's just so much more about the front wing. I'm going with the front wing. So let's get that rolling. Okay, what does UKSN have to say? Podium for your team is a great result. Zoe Sharp raced supremely. How do you feel? And I compliment Zoe there. Mid-season analysis. Last weekend's race in Vancouver marked the halfway point in this dramatic and controversial season. Here at the Evening Herald, we thought it would be an ideal time to catch up with the teams and see how they're coping with the changes. While Panther Race team appear to have been the quickest to adapt, our source within the team reveal, our s revealed should be okay. It's not been easy. Stating every race has been a roller coaster. We've never felt in control at a weekend so far. Yeah, that's pretty much true. Thornton Motorsport are furious. It's ridiculous. We can't plan for anything. We're trying to spin 20 plates at once. And uh, Van Dort driver Wolfgang Schmidt said it's actually quite fun. I don't know why we haven't implemented race sprinklers sooner. So we got mixed reviews for Ernie's little gimmick fest. Okay, and then we got the latest engine in. There's our car repairs. What do we need for Guildford and the rain? We need engines, suspension, and rear wing. So we need to throw the engines on there and the performance. We've got to get reliability up. Let's uh, flip that around.
there we go so this will get our engine ready to go and then whoops on the parts here we're only going to make minimal gains and most of it's probably going to go to the engine because of how much work they have left to do no change there and there's our front wing let's go get a new one And uh, it's still 8th here, but it appears our engine has popped up a little bit. We'll take a closer look at that when we get to the race itself. Still not ready to move that down. And what do we have? Jetty North is hated by our mechanics. So what? And they're happy with our first place position, the chairman is, as you should be. Still not quite there. Okay, we've got some more mail going on here. Report on Guildford, 43 laps, 3.5 miles, fairly long. Only a 20% chance of rain, but they say it's going to be steady. Super soft, soft and medium, and uh, suspensions are the key part. Front wing, and Surikov happy about our gearbox. And there it is. Let's go get our third one. Looks like we're going to be able to put these together quickly, which is going to be nice. Tick that over with one more person working on our car parts, improving them. And now what do we have? Guildford Preview. Steinman are the team to be beat. Not entirely surprising. Chapman still saying that he's coming for Sharp. It's only a matter of time. And Samuel Blanc very concerned about the shocking season at Thornton. Higher-ups need to look into it. Higher-ups can do whatever they want. I don't really care about Thornton. Okay. Nope, not yet. So let's just go through these last couple days. A new front wing again. Let's get our fourth one in place. And then we'll have to probably do something to boost or whatever. I'm just doing no time or cost so we can get these up. After this one we'll be able to build our fifth and final part on the next round. But that'll be after the next race. Soaked through most of our savings there. Now we can move this over a little bit for this last day or so. And we've got reliability all the way up. So they say it's going to take another 60 days 
to max these out. But we did see significant boost here. Um, I think about 20 to 25 points on each of the engines. That's not perfect, but it's not nothing. Let's see where we stand. Overall, still 5th. Still 8th on the engine, but we did boost it up a bit. 4th on the gearbox, even though it's close to the top. Brakes are down to 6th. They're still above average, but that's not by much. 3rd on the front wing. 4th on the suspension. And 8th, just above average, on the rear wing. We've been moving this up a little bit, but we haven't moved it up enough to catch anybody else. It's like this and the gearbox are just such top-heavy parts right now. Oh well, let's see what England has for us. And do we want to go for first with the 1.2 million? I don't think we do, given the fact that uh, we've been struggling a bit on some of the races. It all depends on the, um, the weather, really, how well Steinman does. We definitely can't be confident of victory, though. And they're both now content. Our parts aren't exactly going to set the world on fire. So he's not happy with the overall picture at all. And now we're down to 8th and 9th for our prediction. It's been 7th and 9th the last couple races. So it continues. You know, the, the other car's overall performance continues to outpace ours. Which is a frustration. But what can we do about it? And it, part of it's because we've been putting the effort into the reliability of new parts. Which means you can't put as much effort into improving the performance. But... Uh, Got to get the reliability up first. That's just the way these things are. Okay, so 15 degrees in heavy rain, 19 degrees for practice. I think that we're probably looking at softs here. Given the temperature and that we're going to stay at the back, so we probably won't be on supers. We probably want to be on softs. It's too cold for mediums. Okay, let's take a look at our weight stripping. Three seventy five is where we've been quite a bit lately, and we're back there again. Finished. So it looks like, yep, we lost a level on the mediums because we came just the harest short of level 2. 6th and 16th. Let's see what's in store for us as we start the second half of the year. So we've got a smart aleck here. Marisabel Rother saying, spend less on helicopters and jacuzzis and more on your cars, John Smith. And uh, then they say we're okay-ish, says another fan. Clear to start. So if there's any rain, it's coming later. It did say only a 20% chance. Forecast says. Not in the first part of the race. Okay. We're going softs then. They want super softs. They're not getting them. I understand why they want them. But we're going to play the patient game. We're not going to wear use the most uh, the tires that are going to wear out the fastest starting from the back. Oh, and I didn't realize I had this. Push it to the limit. Removes the red zone from car condition. Well, that's nice. And matter of fact, I think I can still use that. Can I still do weight stripping? I can. So I think instead of going with the tire level, I'm going to use that. 
really max out the weight stripping. You the race trim and then use this to take care of that. What does Surikov have? He still has the same ones. Soft and race trim. So Zoe Sharp can lose whatever the red zone amount is. And it doesn't, it's not giving amount, but the amount's over there. Okay, so drop that down to 55, because that's a 20%. 10% here. 20 there. And I've never done this before, so this could get a little interesting. Okay. 600. And 75 for her uh, weight stripping. That's insane. But we're going with it. Ooh, both of them hit the hit the mark here. Zoe Sharp, of course, we knew was going to be at 99%. And we're going with softs. And the math works out to 30.1 laps. So I am going to drop that tiny little fraction off. I normally keep the fraction. I'm going to drop it down to 30. Just because it's such a small one. And 99% here as well. Can't argue with 99% for both drivers. So 18th and 20th tying our worst starting position of the year. But that just shows how things have been going for us because we're doing great in the race. Now we've got mediums there for Ribeiro. Mediums towards the back. And then we got softs and supers. And Chapman starting on used mediums, that's a bad decision. So it's sort of a mixed bag here in the back half of the field. Both of our drivers having a pretty good day at least that's what that says at a 6 6.2 5.7 I'm happy with those starting conditions slightly slow start for both drivers which they seem to be good at but now come here comes Surikov trying to make something out of this looks like somebody locked up or ran wide or something yeah Gonzalez ran wide on that first turn so we picked up one position there 17th and 19th Surikov picking up one more spot while Sharp is not uh, not sticking with the pace at least at first up to 14th and almost got more so the second good start in a row for Nikolai Surikov working his way up 13th with an eye on Woodford in 12th and there goes that one See, we've got Saarinen up here and Wexler, Holtz. So we got a few of our rivals moving up that way. Chapman not doing too hot on those tires, although Sharp has nothing to say because still ahead of Sharp. So let's see, where's Wexler? Wexler's in sixth. So they're up there good, but I don't really care about that. Holtz matters. And Chapman matters, and Sharp just got by Chapman, finally. So it's time to back off, and you can see the tire temp's getting a little bit high. But we can keep them on push, I believe. Because of, you know, being a good tire for the temps, being a low tire for the temps. Yeah, 16, then it's going to go 15. And yeah, this is going to need to be the last lap. So we're going to switch to more softs. Well, no, we're not. They're going to get more rain. We're going to want to go. I think we're going to want to go inters. And we're going to want to do it at about lap 32. Which is 10, 11 laps away. We're going to go super softs.
Chapman making remarkable progress given how pathetic his tires are. Yeah, 13%. Unbelievable. Actually catching Surikov despite that. We're going to want to stay neutral first and see how that works out. Surikov out in 7th. Sharp in ninth. Not that far ahead of Blanc, but it should not be hard to hold that off. 6.6 .6 for Sharp. Sharp driving well with a ton of uh, weight stripping. Time to go hybrid again. And Surikov looking to make the pass. Had it for a second, then let it go, and now sliding up again. Beautiful. And here comes the rain. Oliveira coming into pit. So we're now third and fifth. And Oliveira made it. That's that, that that's a key point. I, I don't know. I mean, Oliveira could be the race winner. Oh, sprinklers are going. Okay, so now this is going to be a deal of wets. Definitely going to be going wets. And Oliveira came out on inters. <laughs> So, oh boy, that sucks, but uh, sorry about your luck there. Surikov's got to go back down to neutral now. Sharp, though, continues to push it right behind Chapman. Why? No, you don't. You're fine. Oh, boy. Chapman, Sharp, Surikov, and Sharp has come all the way up to take the lead here. Let's hold on. Yeah, we're going to want to... That's wet enough. I'm going to come in this lap. And the thing about it is, the drivers are so close together. I've got to... I've, Sharp is the better driver. I've got to give her the, the priority. So she's going to pit now. And Char or, uh, Surikov's going to have to wait another lap, which sucks. Uh, because, yeah, it's going to be a slow one. And I'm not sure that's even better, but I think it's better. Everybody else is going, I think it's better than having him stack up in the pit for a couple seconds. Maybe not. Go ahead and harvest. Go neutral at first, sharp. Be interesting to see what happens with Surikov. I'm not sure that was the right call. Okay. Sharp is out in seventh, so is Chapman just ahead. We got Schmidt ahead, Wexler ahead, so no guarantee of a great finish. Holtz is right behind. And what happens with Surikov? As the track is now soaked and he's working his way around, and I think, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe I should have had him come in behind Sharp. Probably should have. He'll be out in ninth. Sharp is fifth. Tires wearing down, and there's like 10 laps to go. Go push. Push for both drivers. Condition wise, Surikov can afford to push. And probably some for Sharp as well, so I don't want to take him down to maybe a little over two laps before I switch over. Down to two seconds. But not making any further progress.
Now we'll switch back up to push. Less than three to go. Sharp on the attack again. There is a chance here. Two laps to go, 1.7. Now back up to two seconds and there's nothing I can do to go faster. Meanwhile, Holt's coming up from behind, so that's just as big of a problem. All right, now enough to push there. Got point nine here. About half a lap to go. I'm going to try to go up to high. It's just to hold off Holtz, if nothing else. And Wexler in first, Chapman second. Sharp in fourth. Now what does Surikov think about seventh? Not bad. So we're predicting 8th and 9th, we finish 4th and 7th. It's still not as good uh, as our rivals did. Finished a couple spots behind them in both cases. But we're going to have to live with it. So Dieter Wexler hasn't won in a while. That's a nice little feather in his cap. Well, Nina Holtz gets the fastest lap bonus, but drops a couple places behind Surikov. So that, overall, I believe that is going to help us a little bit in the standings, or at least we won't lose as much as we would have. So Surikov slides down to fourth, just behind Wexler. This trio of Wexler, Surikov, Lippinen, Still very close for third place. Did lose a little bit off the lead, but we've still got 66 points. Still that race and a half, you know, margin that we've been playing around with for quite a while. And seven races to go as we count it down. And Sharp Happy, great job because we're right up there. Both drivers, a strong performance overall. We're having trouble getting Surikov to that final, uh, you know, bonus. But really nice to have that bonus for Zoe Sharp. I think we're going to be using that on a regular basis. So a 6.0 and a 5.8, both above their season average. Marketability slides slightly. But we make more money to spend on more parts. And now we're sitting pretty good heading into Tondela. And we're just starting to get to the point of the year. We're not really running out of the running out the clock yet, but certainly every race that we continue with a 60 to 70 point lead, we're going to be feeling pretty happy about that situation. We'll be off to I believe Portugal in the next episode. Until then, thanks for watching. More of Vernie's Paradise coming up soon.